Okay, okay. Is this thing on? <laughs> hello, hello everyone. Yay! Hey Nicholas, we start off with a bang. I love it. Hey Nancy. Hey Brenda. Hey Kelly. Awesome, awesome. Okay, okay. Is this thing on? <laughs> it looks like there is a major delay. <laughs> hello, hello everyone. Yay! Hey Nicholas, we start off with a bang. I love it. Okay, so I'm just getting everything synchronized here, making sure that we're all on the same page. <laughs> Because sometimes what feeds back to me, oh, hey, Nancy, thank you. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you so much. Jody, hey. Hey, Katie. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Donna. Welcome. Happy to have you. Yay. Awesome. So I'm glad that it's on. Um, as far as my playback, it looks like there's actually a few minutes delay. So um, not really sure how to fix that. There probably is a way. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what let's just go with it right <laughs> let's just go with it hey guys hey I'm so excited let me let me read what you're saying what you saying let's let's see what's happening over here hey Hannah yay <laughs> Nadine what's up Nadine hi Anna hey Tanya awesome it's on it's on like Donkey Kong <laughs> hi Jody. Awesome. Hey, Michelle. Hi. Thank you, Mo. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> Dress for the occasion. <laughs> oh, Denise. Thank, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. That really means a lot. Oh. Divine Regal. Oh, what a name. I love that. Hello. Hello. Hey, Austin. Oh, stop. You look cute every day. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Thanks, Nakia. Yeah, we're going to be talking more about this. Hey, now. <laughs> Hi, Veronica. Welcome. Oh, awesome. Happy belated birthday, Kelly. Happy belated birthday. Thank you, Jody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lisa. Hey, you made it. Awesome. Sarah. Hey, awesome. Hi, Brooke. Hi. Sylvia's in the house. Hey, Sylvia. <laughs> Brenda, the wolf. Can I see yours? I can see your comment. Yeah. I can't see what you're wearing, though. <laughs> Graciela, hey, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, guys. Awesome, awesome. Yay. All right, we got a party going. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Oh, I'm so glad to see everyone. Oh, yay. Look, I'm getting all misty. Oh, I'm getting all misty over here. Awesome. Yay. <sighs> so, welcome back. Welcome back. We are connecting today to talk about, gosh, this is some, some pretty big moon energy this month. I mean, it's just, it's big energy this month anyways, right? It just, doesn't it just feel that way? Like every month we move into, it's just like, it's bigger and it's bigger and it's bigger. If anything, that's just an indication of how much we are expanding, how much we're strengthening, how much we are growing and how we're able to move through things and navigate things uh, on a, on a, in a bigger way, right? Like we are actually expanding ourselves. We are zooming out ourselves. And I feel like this energy is just, it's, it's meeting us, it's matching us, it's challenging us. And we're going to, we're going to dig into it today. So I'm really excited. Yay. <laughs> so hi, Celeste. Hey, welcome. Oh, Nancy. Thank, thank you so much for your blessing again. Thank you so much. Awesome. Oh, you guys, just the best. <laughs> so oh, I am so excited. I'm so excited. There's so 
much. There's so much that I've been wanting to share with you guys. Um, first and foremost, before I move forward, I sincerely have to thank you all. I have to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Just the immense support that I've been receiving from you guys. I mean, this is like, it's actually overwhelming at times. Like it's emotionally overwhelming because I've received so many personal emails, like outside of the business. I've received so many personal messages, emails and phone calls, offering support, offering services, like offering, I have, there's a one follower who he even offered his shop and his tools to help me fix up my rig. I mean, you guys have been incredible absolutely incredible the amount of tender-hearted generosity that is that is coming forward just with me sharing what's going on in my world in my journey I am so incredibly moved and please know if I haven't responded yet to any personal emails or personal phone calls please know it's because I'm completely inundated <laughs> I've got a lot going on and I'm trying to prioritize and balance and a little bit of juggling uh, at the same time of you know doing like <laughs> physical labor <laughs> as well as you know maintaining my personal practice as well as the business as well as uh, really being here for you guys and prioritizing honestly prioritizing the you know readings and and so having said all that uh, there is a lot going on and just having this this constant um, incoming this pouring in of generosity and support I I can, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm tripping over my words, honestly. Like, I feel so sincerely grateful, and, and I just, I want you to feel this gratitude that's coming from me. Thank you, thank you so much for, for supporting me so that I can further support you. <laughs> Love that reciprocity, right? That equal give and take. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So, hey, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> spill the tea. <laughs> thank you, Nicholas. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much for your blessings. My God, you guys. See, I'm just going to, like, take a minute and, like, go, like, you know, dab my eyes. Like, my goodness, you guys, thank you so much. Joni, hey, thank you, Joni. Hey, hey, Tasha, hey. Ellen's here, awesome. Sharon, yep, changing direction. So, oh, my gosh, so we're going we're gonna to talk about some stuff. <laughs> we're going to talk about some stuff today. Thank you, Sylvia. I'm so grateful for you, too. Hey, Cody, hey, long time no, no connect, right? <laughs> Hey, Danielle, Danielle, it's because of what you provide to us. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Danielle, sincerely. I mean, can you guys feel this? Can you feel this? It's just radiating this joy, this this gratitude just radiating from me. I'm, I'm so, this is, it's really boggling my mind. It's really boggling my mind. It's totally going against, uh, you know, any any um, feelings of like, you know, I'm, I'm working independently and I'm on my own. Like, I really feel like it takes a, a value, or a value village. <laughs> It takes a value village. It takes a village <laughs> to create value is what I was trying to say. But hey, you know, if you're in thrifting, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Kelly, oh my gosh. Hoo-ya. Thank you so much. Thank, that's a full-on high five. Thank you for your blessing, Kelly. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> oh, Celeste, you're just like cozying up in the Scorpio energy, huh? Yes. <laughs> So, okay, so before we get, you know, diving into, because, you know, Scorpios love to go deep, right? Before we get deep into this energy, a couple of, couple of uh, house announcements. First and foremost, you may notice my, my empath apparel. I'm rocking one of the new t-shirts that is now available on my website. If you go to boomingeye.com and you click on shop, you can check out the, the, uh, the newest uh, options. If you're feeling connected, if you want to broadcast that message, I can tell you just going into like the natural food co-op, like this is an absolute conversation starter. <laughs> it's like you attract your tribe. Do you know what I mean? Like people recognize, people like, <laughs> you know, like it definitely, definitely connects. So yeah, if you're if you're digging it, I promise promise you guys would be wearing it. Here it is. I don't know. Can you see this? Okay. Is this is this coming through? Is it 10-4? Is this coming through? <laughs> so uh, my plan moving forward is to actually have different options, like maybe you know get uh, you know hats and mugs and and pillows. But uh, right now there is um, a couple of t-shirts, tank tops, uh, some leggings, and even a baby onesie because you know babies are born pure. <laughs> why not right so uh, if you're into that check it out um, I would encourage you to do so there are uh, frequent printings and so far everyone who's received their order has been pretty satisfied <laughs> to say the least actually pretty stinking excited <laughs> so it's pretty awesome um, aunt 
Uh, what's the next thing I want to mention? Oh, recorded readings. So I'm still doing the recorded readings. So knowing, yes! <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. What? <laughs> shook, shook to your core. Um, so the recorded readings, I'm still definitely doing recording re recorded readings. Uh, I won't be stopping them at the end of the month, but the special, the like ultra super discounted rate of $22 for two questions for a 15 minute reading, that's going to be going on until the end of the month. So the price is going to go back up to $44 on June 1st. So if you've got some burning questions or if I'm not able to get to your questions tonight, that might be a really good option for us to connect and for you to get a reading that way. Or even if you want to just sample my work or sample what it feels like to connect energetically, you know, be, be read by me or have a session with me, uh, that would be a great option for you. Um, and I also, actually, I do have a couple of open slots for live readings, live sessions. I am, I do still hold my office space in Linwood, and so if you want to connect in person, if you're local, or if you want to connect remotely via Skype, um, I was going to say live stream, Skype, FaceTime, we know our words. And uh, via telephone, those are options as well to actually connect live one-on-one -on -one and not do something pre-recorded. Although, I will send you a recording of our session when we are through so that you can go back and review the work that we've done together. So, uh, yeah, I feel like that's that's it. Oh, finally, um, so this, this is also still going on. So for the rest of the year, if we haven't worked together and you want to book a session, whether it be uh, a live intuitive healing session or just, just connecting uh, for a one hour session, just when you're booking your, your appointment, you're booking your session, just plug in new client 111 and that'll actually mark down the price from $150 typically for the hour reading or session. It's going to mark it down to $111. So uh, definitely take advantage of that if we have not connected before. And I look forward to working with you. <laughs> so, all right. How's it going over here, y'all? Yay, I know. Right, isn't this exciting? Like, there's so many... <laughs> Sometimes I feel so wimpy. Like so, so often I see, like especially like teenagers, teenage boys, like they'll be wearing clothes that have very graphic, vivid messaging on them, but it's just not a message of love. Do you know what I mean? It's just like not a message that I want to get on board with. And I feel like this is something that, like this is this is messaging that I can align with. Other otherwise, it's just like you know, give me a plain T-shirt or a shirt with hearts on it <laughs> any day. <laughs> so yeah, definitely messaging that. When you're discovering your your empathic abilities and your sensitivities, this is something that you know you may feel aligned with as well. So I encourage you to check that out. Check it out. <laughs> I am empath and I feel you, and it's on my shirt. <laughs> okay. Oh, awesome, Kelly! I'm so glad that you enjoyed your recorded reading. Yeah, it's it's really it's fun to do because um, typically when we're you know live session, I get that like live feed. Uh, you know, if something lands or um, you know if if we need to pivot or shift, like it's you know it's in conversation mode. You're right there. And during the recorded readings, it's just kind of like I bring it on through in full faith. And so the response has been really really wonderful, knowing that everything has been super accurate and that it's really <laughs> benefited folks. Um, there's one of you that that emailed me today. I just read it before hopping on here. Thank you. You know who you are. Uh, you said that you listened to it about 50 times. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like that's like the highest form of flattery <laughs> I can receive, which is, it's, that's telling me that it's helping you. Do you know what I mean? Like that tells me that like you're getting something out of it that applies, that there's more layers that you're peeling through within just that mini reading in itself. And that is, I mean, seriously, that just blows my hair back. That really just fills my heart. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, bluebirds. <laughs> Okay, so what do you say we, we actually dig into this energy, huh? talking about this full moon energy? I have extensive notes <laughs> because there's, there's quite a bit um, that I wanted to mention and bring through, and, and I don't want to miss anything. So um, how, are you, how did you guys fare this full moon? How did, you, how did you feel moving through this? Were you affected by the energy? Did you have um, any physical symptoms? Did you have any situations in your life come up? Any tower moments? Um, any <laughs> wake up calls? Anything that you know, got your attention? Let me know. 
let me know uh, because what <laughs> there has been this has been eventful to say the least right this moon has absolutely been eventful so we have just moved through the Scorpio full moon also the, the, the full flower moon right so we just moved through that that was on Saturday uh, depending on where you are in the world so Pacific Standard Time it was around 2 11 p.m. I think or 2 14 p.m. something so <laughs> it was around a little after 2 in the afternoon Pacific Standard Time but one thing I found with this full moon energy is that I, I was experiencing I'm not sure if you feel the same way but uh, I was experiencing it a week before and I feel that it's, it's going to continue lingering for about a week after typically when I feel the full moon it's it's pretty heavy it's pretty intense and impactful around three days before and three days after but this was something that it was almost like a, this like slow groundswell like you can feel something building and then there is a snap right there's a snapping point of, of relief there's a snapping point of just I, I want to say like expression right like something was alleviated something was relieved yeah oh, hell inspired awesome awesome good deal keep it yeah <laughs> keep it a moving I love that oh awesome Denise you're gonna look hella cool in it <laughs> I love it it was a kicker it definitely was and even if you have Scorpio in your chart or not this is it affected different people differently, but it was intense nonetheless. And honestly, um, I can I can share with you that a lot of folks that I've talked to, it was kind of um, extreme responses. Some people had a very very different weekend than others, right? Some people had a very lovely weekend. It was very easy breezy. It was very productive. It was very light and bright. And then others, it was just like <laughs> sobbing, you know, eating comfort foods, like what's happening, what's going on, like intensity, feeling hungover, feeling the headache, feeling like um, coming down with something. So very, very different extremes, just depending on where you are in your journey, depending on where Scorpio is in your chart and how this was affecting you. But it definitely, thank you, Nancy. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> so much. It really, um, yes, depression as well, definitely. Skin stuff, interest, yeah, thank you, Sammy, for mentioning that. That was also a weird thing that happened last week. Absolutely, you're not the first one to, to share that. Um, random, like, almost like rashes or bug bites or irritations, itchiness, dry stuff happening with the skin, just a lot of skin issues. Definitely, definitely. Oh, Celeste, I'm so happy to hear that you felt the need to create, yes. Divine Regal says, I've had some weird encounters, like my sibling had a dream of an old friend who said she felt that I needed to know. People kept reappearing in my life, and I kept seeing the old friend along with numbers. Yes, so dreams have been big also, and we're going to share, yep, we're going to get into that as well. Yeah, soda pop bottle. Situationally, yes, some things that should have been hard are becoming huge hurdles. It's been up and down, feeling stress, and then something solved, and then another problem arising. <laughs> kind of like as you're as you're describing that, I'm envisioning like a tough mudder obstacle course, or like like a motorbike, motocross. Like it's just like <laughs> right. It's like one after the other. Yeah, perpetual hangover, Nicholas. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is, it's one of those things like you can't stop the rain, right? But you can use the rain to help you grow your flowers and help your flowers bloom. And it's funny too because this was the full flower moon. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen um, Bambi, right? The Disney classic Bambi. You remember the character Flower, the little skunk? There was, uh, I, I kept feeling, I kept feeling this this connection or, or I felt this imagery come forward with, with Flower, how Flower was very, um, almost like accommodating and shy and bashful and demure and like wasn't really in touch with with his confidence with his personal power with his potential and I feel like maybe I'm misremembering but like we never even really learned what his real name was it was like Bambi called him flower and so therefore he was flower and so like it just kind of stuck like he didn't really stand in his own power because of his own inadequacies and part of what was coming through with this this full moon energy a lot of what we're working on is removing these feelings of not feeling worthy right not feeling um deserving of xyz deserving of love deserving of attention deserving of the promotion deserving of having our dreams materialize and come true so anywhere that we were still have been or even still are have been carrying inadequacies or insecurities or feelings of unworthiness this moon just really zeroed in on it 
It also connected us with if we've been doing work in that area. So if you've been healing areas within yourself that have to do with this, like you've been actually actively working on strengthening your will and stepping back into your power and just, and inf I don't want to say inflating, like inflating an ego, but in, if you have been um, pushed in, so a lot of the times, like if, if your aura, if your boundaries have been pushed in if someone has crossed the boundary or, or tested your limits your aura can actually be pushed in and so part of this is like we allow ourselves to walk through life like that and there may even be you know these these testaments of bravado of you know false hubris of just like um you know trying to be that false confidence right be larger than we are but like really at the base of it feeling super insecure and feeling like, oh, I hope this goes well, or I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, or having all this self-doubt. And that takes our power from us. So the whole the whole crux of this is really to get down to the deepest wells, the, the deepest stores of our own personal power by removing the sludge, by removing the ick that has been blocking that, has been blocking our access to that. So if we have been uh, deceived, if we have been lied to, if we have been triggered, if we have been um, misled or fooled, or if we um, had a truth bomb drop on us, or a reality check of, you know, um, being shown that maybe a past decision wasn't the best one for ourselves, or fully aligned, or um, we are able to observe something that we have committed to, or we have created, or we have invited in, and it turns out to not be a direct reflection of our true soul self. This was the time, right? This was the time. And it's interesting too, because not everyone had to experience this in their environment, right? So like you didn't necessarily have to have that confrontational conversation or have that heartbreak or have that um, humiliating, triggering moment. You didn't necessarily have to have that. You could have honestly just slept all weekend <laughs> and still have had the, the work done, right? So, uh, like on a higher level and a higher frequency. And the reason I'm sharing that is because I was shown this imagery of those that have anchored within the 5D, right? So those of you that have been working on truly anchoring yourself into this, this portal that you carry within you, this ability to open up into multiple dimensions, multiple realms, connect with intergalactic energies, connect with your star family, right? Connect with your constellation family, <laughs> connect with other dimensions and alien energies as well, and your angels, right? Your guardians, your protectors. There has been this profound supportive assistance that has stepped forward and we have been having work done on us when because we have been showing up, right? We have been showing that we are willing. We have been showing through our vibration, through our actions that we are willing to continue peeling back the layers. And when we do that, what we're, we're getting met, right? We're getting matched with, with that same equal receptive energy. And so we have had thought patterns, right? We have had karmic cycles. We have had negative uh, thought loops. We have had emotional patterns. We have had karmic situations literally just removed, just, just removed. Because I've shown this image of being taken into, the best way I can describe this is like a blue dimension and it felt very Arcturian. Um, at the same time, there was uh, <laughs> a, almost like a, a connection to a Pleiadian energy in the background is the best way I can describe this. And it felt very blue. Everything was like different colors of blue, different frequencies of blue, which felt very noble, felt very true, it felt very honorable, it felt very clear, it felt very like WYSIWYG, like what you see is what you get. And I was shown this imagery of being laid down on a platform and having this this medical being um, working within the headspace, working within within the wiring within the brain, and removing um, codes, removing programming, removing old patterns, removing um, density and blockages that don't fully align with with the shifts and the changes, so that we can evolve moving forward. So um, and it and it felt very much like. <sighs> <laughs> like like you can breathe easier, right? You can breathe easier. So that felt really profound. So, oh my gosh, I see a lot of you guys are, are writing a lot of stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, shout out to the star seeds. Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> so let me just check back in with you guys uh, before I keep moving forward. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, oh, skin, itching on the skin. Yep. Even the scalp, itching in the scalp if you've had um, almost like 
tingles is the best way you can describe it. Like feelings of, this is gonna sound so bizarre, but like maybe you feel like you have bugs on you, feeling like, like kind of creeped out or scabies, like just kind of feeling that around your skin was very prominent during this full moon. Yeah, Sammy, I'm feeling sunburned without the sun exposure. Yes, people from the past returning. Yeah, we're gonna talk more about that. <laughs> Definitely gonna talk more about that. Uh, Michelle, dreams, yes. Oh man, there's so much, there's so much work, especially in like the Divine Union Collective, Twin Flame Collective, Soul Partnership. There's been a lot that's been going on within the dream realm. A lot of work that's being done there. Um, I don't know what I want right now or what I'm manifesting during this moon made me think. Excellent, excellent. Like get really clear on your intentions and what you're asking for. And what is that saying? Like pray for what you want and work for what you need. <laughs> so like, yeah, like you know you got to fulfill your needs. So like it's okay to, you know, get into the rhythm of working for those needs. But like if you want to expand, you want to grow, you want to change something that feels unsatisfying currently, that's when you, yeah, get in there, like get clear. What am I asking for? What am I asking for? Not just from God and the universe, but like my higher self, like let's get a plan. <laughs> yes, that was a mood. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Celeste, you exfoliated your whole body. Beautiful. Excellent. Yeah. Hi, Dave. Hey. <laughs> Discussing the moon and its effects. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Red Buddha sleep is exactly what was happening. Good deal. Good. <laughs> Major sleep. Yes. Awesome. Listen to that. Honor that. Honor your rhythms. You're not sick. Nothing's wrong. Itchy scalp. Yep. Yeah. You need to exercise. Ex well, that's, I mean, that's always a good idea, honestly, because when we move our bodies, even if you're feeling tired, just going for like a 15 minute walk around, around the neighborhood, really what that does is that shifts energy, that moves the energy through your system. Because if we're sitting in our own juices, right, we're just kind of stewing in our own stink sometimes, it can actually build on itself and become increasing, he increasingly heavier and heavier. So just, ah, oh, Michelle, 11, 11, awesome. <laughs> So um, that can actually support in shifting energy, moving energy. So I don't know if you ever noticed, like if you're, this is, if I ever get really super like charged up, like something um, irritates me or angers me and like I just, I have the wherewithal of like, I'm not going to react, right? I'm not going to fall into a reaction, but I'm feeling very intense emotions, very intense energy. I need to move. I need to move. And just that process, it's almost like a transcendental meditation, like keeping the body busy, right? Keeping the body doing something and keeping that, that energy moving so that you can actually process and cycle through whatever, whatever needs to be unpacked, whatever just came in. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> awesome. 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 Okay. Ruth, greetings from the UK. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Right back at you, Ruth. <laughs> okay, so, um, so going back to my notes here. So definitely releasing feelings of unworthiness. Um, any issues around self-esteem, so latent issues of not feeling like enough, or even conversely having situations uh, pop up where you're you have opportunities to show you, almost test you, and show you where you're at. So maybe in the past, you know, there would have been a situation where. Um, a rejection would have hit you harder, whereas now it's just like, meh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, oh, don't want to go on a second date? Yeah, okay, I didn't feel it either. You know what I mean? Like, whereas in the past, been like, oh, what's wrong with me? Like, what, you know, did I say something? Like, did I did I smell weird? Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's an opportunity to show you, to reflect back to you how far you've come in the personal work around these areas. Um, also, forgiveness of self. So if there's anything that has uh, come up recently, come up in the past, where it's like, you know, dang it, like, why did I make that decision? Why didn't I see that coming? Why did I allow myself to fall into that? Why did I trust this person? Why did I, why did I, why did I, right? So that that's heaviness too. That's heaviness too, and that blocks us from feeling fully confident and fully anchored within our own power moving forward because, you know, if we put ourselves out there again, I don't know, I'm thinking of Colonel Sanders, 
<laughs> apparently Colonel Sanders, this is a, this, the story goes, Colonel Sanders got a thousand no's before he got his first yes. And anyone who receives a thousand no's, like, may get the picture, may get the feeling after a while that, like, maybe what I'm doing isn't good enough, or maybe this isn't supposed to work, or maybe this is a feeling of failure, and can actually own that, right? But if you are able to show up anchored within your full power of, like, this may be weird, this may be unique, this may be new, it's only because I haven't found the alignment yet, I haven't found the right fit yet, I'm going to continue forward. You are actually anchoring within your full power and that is going to allow you to maximize that and actually realize or materialize any dream, goal, or desire that you have been working on, that you've been manifesting or that you hold within your heart space. And especially, just to comment on that, if you're holding it in your heart space, there's a reason, right? There's a reason, whether this be your soul gift, your life purpose, or just even a new timeline for you to step onto that will actually leave you, lead you, yeah, leave you as well, like lead, lead you away from anything that was uh, learning your soul lessons in a difficult manner and moving more into, you know, I'd rather learn these lessons with ease, <laughs> with delight, with joy. And that can just simply be stepping onto a new timeline. And you can do so when you're feeling freer and not holding onto any anger or resentment or having a chip on your shoulder for yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, be in between the rain that continued all weekend. Yes, yeah, so right, thank goodness for the rain. Those Thunderbirds doing their job. Purification, right? Purification in the rains. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> oh, Dave. Okay, yeah. My sincerest, my sincerest condolences. Katie, can you help my life? So we are not getting to the questions yet, but we will get there, Katie, for sure. For sure. Okay. Awesome. Moving right along. Okay, so uh, you may have found this for yourself or people within your life that there have been um, situations, opportunities, discussions, conversations to uh, remove masks, right, or any issues surrounding deceit or deception. And this can even be, um, have you ever had those situations where you know you're being lied to. Like who who's talking to you is not necessarily being um, completely forthright and honest, but then you actually find out later it's because they're lying to themselves. So they actually believe what they're saying, but it's not honest fully. This is an area that has also become um, a frequent theme within this energy of being shown areas of in inauthenticity uh, within relationships, within dynamics, within partnerships, within friendships. And so this has been something that is um, really also connected to unleashing our unique deep power by removing these latent insecurities. And especially when we have our closest relationships, our closest relationships are the mirrors that reflect ourselves back to ourselves. So um, <laughs> what is that House of Ocean? What does she say? Moving forward. <laughs> Moving forward. Um, okay, so feelings of going for it and nothing to lose. Okay, so yeah, so the beauty part of this, right? So we're talking about like this, this groundswell, like it's been like this slow build. It's been like this, you know, it's constantly increasing like this uh, last week, moving into this full moon energy. It's like something's got to give, something's building, there's an intensity that's building. And part of this release, right, part of what is alleviating this this snap, this healing, what, whatever you, you feel aligned to call it, this is actually getting us into a really powerful place that we can launch from, that we can start taking action, and we can actually move towards our goals and desires that may have long seemed uh, unreachable or unattainable or maybe like in the distant, distant future or maybe not possible. Like I don't have X, Y, Z. I don't have the resources. I don't have the help. I don't have the support yet. Um, that feels like so unattainable. And now because we are feeling more ourselves, more in our power. And if you don't feel it yet, you will, right? You will. This is, this is a process. We're all at different places within our journey, but you will feel more aligned with it so that you may actually feel like I really have nothing left to lose. I only have everything to gain. And so I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna embrace it and I'm just gonna go for it. And especially, especially with creative endeavors. Especially, I mean, this has been this has been a theme that has been woven through not just this month, but like this entire year, is that we've been getting led <laughs> like a horse to water. We have been getting led to really sample and taste what it feels like to be connected to our creativity and to actually have that that overflow have that abundance flow through us and see what's possible with that 
because we've been moving past these fears of rejection, failure, and inadequacies, it's also allowing us to take um, bigger risks, bigger leaps. Um, and if we take that big risk and that big leap and we get that no or we get that not now or we get that, um, you know, not this way, it's not, it's not something that we find that we have to own any longer. Um, so, it, again, they're, they're just giving me, I say they, my guides, they're just giving me this example of, like, on the playground as a, as a child, um, approaching, you know, being, being a new kid in school and approaching the kids and asking, like, hey, can I play with you guys? And then getting that shutdown, getting that, no, your, your shirt's weird or you smell funny or your lunch is weird or whatever. As a kid, you own that, right? You own that. Not every kid. <laughs> Not every kid. But the, the, the common result of that is, is that you own that because you don't understand you're showing up you know, with this pure intention, but like there may be feelings of misunderstand, being misunderstood or feelings of not being adequate, feelings of not being cool enough or, or whatever it is. Whereas now it's like we're healing those inner child, those inner children, those innermost parts of ourselves that own the rejection, that own the failure and take it as something as like a direct result of like, well, that must mean that I'm broken that must mean that something's wrong with me and that's when you really get down to confronting and looking clearly at any areas of inadequacy insecurity feelings of uh, rejection unrequited love um, really it's all about like well how how were you showing up and what did you take away from that and so not only do we have this clearing right do we have this opportunity to purge and release any of that energy that's not serving us but now we have this tenacity right now we have this fire behind us where it's like i can get that thousand no's because i know there is at least one yes out there i can put myself out there and there will be at least one yes or there will be at least one opportunity like that's what i'm going for that's what i'm going for i just heard it's a numbers game baby it's a numbers game so like you may be feeling that you may be feeling that that heat, that push to pursue what you've been what you've been percolating over. There has also been a lot <laughs> surrounding past life issues. So I mean, this is not uncommon. This is nothing new, right? Especially in the world of metaphysics, there's a lot of interest around past lives, and you know whether it's it's fascination, whether it's entertainment, whether it's for the reason of healing self, for you know information and more. Um, more of a, like a deeper understanding of the origin of certain traumas or wounds or, or patterning. Um, this is actually coming up now because we are ending so much that has been carried through multiple lives and multiple incarnations. It's like something that may have been unfulfilled like lifetime after lifetime or you know if you're connecting with the same soulmate or the same karmic partner lifetime after lifetime and it's like the same thing, same thing. It's ending now. It's ending now because that's been fulfilled, right? The lessons have been learned. Like, you got it. You got the memo. <laughs> you know, your, your soul has received the lesson and the growth from that, and it is time to move on. So there is a lot of simultaneous endings and beginnings um, and a lot of new endings, right? A lot of a lot of things that, like, okay, I, I know now that this is ending, or, like, we're beginning the ending process, uh, if that makes sense. Like, we're going to start taking action steps now to officially end this. We're not just going to talk about this now. We're not just going to... Um, daydream about this or you know propose like you know like in a fitting room trying on like how would it feel if I were to end this or how to feel like there may actually be action steps now that you feel supported in order to end this and it's very much connected to past life so okay so the next next bit of notes I want to talk about is more of like twin flame soulmate dynamic so I'm gonna check in with you guys before moving forward Oh, Beverly, thank you for asking. Awesome. Slow and steady, but awesome. I'm still, like, super excited about it. It is a lot of work, but I have a lot of help and a lot of support. So thank you for asking. Oh, awesome, soda pop bottle. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Happy to help. <laughs> mm. Donna, yeah. It's our closest relationships, yep. Yeah. Danielle, your husband, yep. Oh, Celeste, that's so generous, sending out those positive vibes. Yes, broadcast them, sister. Broadcast that love. Mm -hmm. Yes, ready to launch. Yay, Michelle. Yes. Hey, Juliet, good evening to you. <laughs> 
Jayla. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Jayla. 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 Can I say it like that? Jayla. <laughs> I want to do like a little neck action. Jayla. Excellent. Yeah. I'm so glad it's connecting. Yes. Hey, Rowan from Bothell. Awesome. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> awesome. Yes. We were doing that powerful ancestral work. Awesome, Jayla. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's such good stuff. You're welcome, Sammy. You're so welcome. <laughs> yeah, the fears can be real when they're coming up to be taken. Like, they're asking for you to acknowledge them and take a look at, like, well, why are you even here? Right? Why are you even here? It's like it's like the monster that's living under the bed. It's like, well, how? when did you move in? <laughs> Who said you could live under my bed? And, like, let's, let's renegotiate this arrangement because you can't live here anymore. You, you, Godspeed, right? Like, as you're releasing the fears, like, Godspeed. But... You can't live here anymore. <laughs> yes. Yay, me too, Jolie. I'm glad you did. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Ooh. Nakia, you've got some fun stuff happening. Awesome. So let's dig into that. So, okay. <laughs> so, um, I actually wrote quite a bit here. So excuse me for reading from, from my notes, but... There's quite a bit. So um, what has shown up in the twin flame and soulmate dynamics, right? So if you are in a twin flame union, partnership, journey, even even if you're in separation, if there's limited or no communication, or you're in a soulmate dynamic, um, and really, <laughs> I, I struggle with that because I really feel like anyone who's in your life, anyone who's in your awareness is a soulmate. There's, some, there's something. There's something that is happening there. Uh, so there's different degrees of soulmate. So what I'm talking about specifically is romantic, right? Romantic or relationship. So if you are in this dynamic, uh, there have been issues surrounding unconditional love that have been coming up. So, oops, there we go. So um, the Divine Feminine has actually had the biggest issue. I won't say the biggest because they're all big, <laughs> right? But one of, let me just say like a cardinal sin. A cardinal sin for the Divine Feminine has been being lied to or has been um, being fooled or deceived. That is that is something that has been an ongoing wound, it has been an ongoing trigger, and it has been something that within the Divine Feminine Collective, that is something that we as Divine Feminine, we own that, right? We own that, like, I'm not enough, or I am not worthy, or I am, there's something wrong with me, or I'm not providing enough, so therefore you must lie to me or seek you know, resources, attention, love, uh, phys physical intimacy, elsewhere. So that's been very damaging within the divine feminine energy. And so this has actually popped up where um, deception, <laughs> I wrote the cardinal sin of deception has popped up, and we are actually still finding a way to be able to hold the sacred space of unconditional love. So whereas in the past, this has been like, that's it! you're dead to me, <laughs> you know, I, I can never trust you again, you're a POS, right, there's something wrong with you, I never want to see your ugly mug again, right, it could be very, very reactive, very aggressive, very volatile, very violent, because it's very wounded, right, this is an area of, of deep, deep wounding, whereas now what we are finding as we are shifting because the Divine Feminine Collective has done so much, and when I say the Divine Feminine, you don't have to be a biological woman. You don't even have to feel like the Divine Feminine all the time. This is very much a spectrum. Everything is a spectrum. This is very much a spectrum. So this could be something that even if you are a Divine Masculine, you still carry this energy within you of owning that failure, owning that rejection. And also the Divine Masculine has its own version of it. But this is not something where in the past it's like, you lied to me, you cheated on me, that's it, we're done, I never want to see you again, you're you're dead to me, right? Like just very, very much done. Or it's like an ongoing saga, ongoing drama, like, oh, if I take you back, if I forgive you, then I'm the piece of shit, then, you know, I'm settling, or like I'm not feeling good enough because I'm with someone who can't be authentic or can't be honest with me. That's old, right? That's the old energy that we still carry, that can still have an echo. Or something that, um, and again, this, I'm speaking in very blanket terms because we're connecting with the collective, but you may even find, find within your own personal journey, or may have found, that 
that's something that you have worked on, right? Is like just getting back into love, getting back into love, no matter what illusion is being presented, no matter what your environment is reflecting back to you, is getting back into that energy of unconditional love. And that is very much present during this time right now with, with this very intense energy that we're in, where something may have come up within your partnership, within your union, and you have either or are actively shifting out of that anger, that, that judgment, that betrayal, that um, you know feelings of darkness, and are actually moving towards healing that, alleviating that, and shifting back into unconditional love. Just because, okay, actually, let me just read what I wrote. Because <laughs> I feel like I could just go off on that. Um, so the Divine Feminine is absolutely not, all caps, not accepting any bullshit or falling into the old patterns or accepting anything that is not what she deserves. And when I say she, again, I just am referring to the energy. Not what she deserves. But rather than holding on to anger, grudges, and res resentment, we are able to shift easily in time into a positive, loving space. So holding that sacred space, holding that vibration, holding that energy of unconditional love is so drastically different from anything the Divine Masculine has experienced before. Because typically in this journey, there has been, you know, whether it be mother issues or past partners, past spouses, children, family, it doesn't matter. What the Divine Masculine has experienced is anything but unconditional love, only conditional love. Like if you serve a purpose, if you, if you know, like tit for tat, like if you do something for me, it's, it's a negotiational transactional exchange. That's what love has been. And that is deep. That is deep because if there has been any rejection in love, do you see how this is all connected? If there has been rejection in love, then that must equate to, hmm, the value of what I'm providing, whatever I'm doing, this tit for tat exchange is not enough. Therefore, I am not enough. Therefore, anything that looks like love, smells like love, I'm going to be terrified. I'm going to be resistant. I'm going to be dead set on not opening up to that because I know what that's about and that's painful and that's painful. So a lot of the energy that the Divine Masculine has been in is to skate that, right? Is to skirt around that and not necessarily drudge that up. But this energy, especially if you're, you've been in uh, separation, like if you've been pushed away or if you've been in un, unable, un, thank you, <laughs> unable to communicate, sometimes you have to help me with the words, unable to communicate, whether you're not able to get through or you're just not feeling aligned with it, you're not feeling connected or, you know, you've been arguing, whatever the reason may be, it's almost like the universe has kind of like kept this little pause button going to allow this space for him to work through his own realization of receiving unconditional love because this is very very new and very different from anything that he has experienced before again when I say he I'm just referring to the masculine energy <laughs> so by the divine feminine holding this positive loving sacred space of unconditional love this is enabling the divine masculine to surrender into his own ego death and darkness that they are currently in and carry with them while the feminines are getting the green light to start taking action in their creative pursuits. So it's not like this, um, you know, early on in the journey, and depending on where you are in the journey, like you may have just started or you may be a veteran, <laughs> they've been on this for a while, but there is a point in the journey where the divine feminine, for those who, who relate or identify with the divine feminine energy, um, will give pieces of themselves or parts of themselves in order to like send healing or to do favors or to send energetic support to the divine masculine and almost put themselves on hold and that is also part of the old that is also part of what needs to shift and change or what is asking to shift and change so now the feminine the divine feminine is learning how to hold this vibration of unconditional love at the same time not accepting any bullshit <laughs> not accepting anything that is uh, below a certain vibration, below a certain standard, or below a certain desire than what she is desiring or deserving or requesting. So hopefully that makes sense. So rather than holding on the space like, okay, I'm holding this vibration, I'm just, I'm gonna hold it for you and then when you're ready, like hopefully you'll tell me you love me and hopefully that energy is gone. That energy is gone or, or it's leaving, it's, it's being alleviated. So that what can happen now is, okay, I'm going to send you some love, like I've got this unconditional love for you and, and I feel that truly and deeply. I also do not feel responsible to fix your life or fix what's going on with you. So I'm just going to hold that space, that love and see that you, that the potential, the possibility, I, I see you as the divine masculine, as the king that you naturally are. Even if you're not behaving like that, I will hold that vision for you. And while you're doing what you need to do, 
I'm going to go get it. <laughs> I'm going to go get after it. I'm going to go do what I need to do. I'm going to focus on my creative pursuits. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to go get a massage. I'm going to get my paints out. I'm going to have a, a you know canvas and sit night <laughs> with my friends. I'm going to make a little aquarium with succulents. I'm going to, I'm going to do something fun and fancy, right? Like being pushed away, or it could be something much bigger than that. It could be something like, you know, I am going to do that cross country move. Like I can't put my life on hold for this. I love you. Just let me know if you want this, I'll be, I'll be living my life, right? I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to make my life happen. I'm going to make that magic happen. So the divine feminines are really feeling that, that push. And you know, anytime I pull like future tense energy or predictive energy, please know there's karma, there's destiny, and there's free will, and especially with this tumultuous topsy turvy twin flame energy, it's ever ever changing. Uh, but what I'm feeling is that the more you move onward, the divine masculine, he's gonna catch up. He's gonna catch up, and they process things very very differently. So, like like an example, the example that um, that I actually I shared with someone recently. So if I'll share an example that that I encountered. So I, I worked with a divine feminine, the divine masculine. Who, who identify as such and they were actually reflecting each other they were reflecting the same energy the same they were working through the same vibration of energy but what was happening she was experiencing doubts like is is this my person is this the person I'm supposed to be with like am I supposed to work on this is there something really here like this has been quite um, emotional and this has been roller coaster and it's been very draining and it's been taxing at times and so I'm, I'm going within I'm wrestling with these doubts I'm not really sure so I'm, I'm kind of observing I'm feeling a little guarded I'm standoffish right this is a very internal process that's happening for the divine feminine very very internal same energy right same energy that the divine masculine was going through he was experiencing the same exact emotional unrest the same amount of doubt the same amount of fear but was exercising it in a very different way. And his version of going within or working through that energy was going on to dating apps and just swiping and not even going on dates, not even seeing it through and taking action. Like he wasn't seeking, um, like I'm not happy here, so I'm going to find someone else. It was more so like needing that validation or exercising options because he's taking action. So uh, I, ho I hope I'm explaining that that clearly. Where the divine feminine, her process is very internal. It's very much to go within in order to sort through, sift through, and get clear on things and to work through the energy. Whereas the divine masculine. He needs to go outwards, right? Like he needs to take action. He sorts through things by maybe making some some goofy decisions or you know, decisions that are not in his highest and best interest. Same, you know, it's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just working through it in different ways. So, um, so hopefully, hopefully that that explains explains that. <laughs> um, okay, gosh, there is more. There is more, but I want to check in with you guys. Let's see if you guys had any comments or questions okay yay thanks Jolie <laughs> me too share the wealth tell your friends <laughs> oh that's so cool Sammy you're opening my sweet you are you're opening yeah sunflower girl I have a lot of big changes coming up is there anything I need to know? Okay, so we're not at the question part yet. So uh, I'm going to ask you to save your question for when for when we're doing the live readings. Right now we're just discussing the energy. I think I'm a little done with this soulmate connection. Too much pain. Yeah, but that's, you know, free will. That's your choice. Absolutely. Start moving in the direction that you're feeling called for you. For you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's just like a lot of nodding heads, okay? <laughs> Normally I would hate him for betraying me, but I find that I love him unconditionally, which shows me that I grew right past this. Yes, Nikia, yes! That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Yas. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that, right? Think about that. How cool is that? Like you have just exercised a major shift away from conditional love into this Christ consciousness energy of unconditional love. How big is that? It's pretty fucking big. <laughs> pretty fucking big. Yes, Jennifer, definitely hold on to your question and I will do live readings uh, once we are through discussing the energies. It's probably just going to be like another 10 minutes or so. I'm guessing. Yay. Yay. 
Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Divine Regal, that's how you felt, Divine Feminine. Yeah. Hey guys, if you're asking me questions, I am just going to skip right past it because we're not there right now. And I say this with love, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm just not going to do it. Not yet, not yet. Okay. All right, Red Buddha. You are correct. No one else can define your life purpose. There are guides, though. People can <laughs> assist and guide. But you're absolutely right. Like, no one can tell you more than what you already know about yourself. Wait a cotton picking minute. <laughs> oh, good, Sammy. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Okay. So, um, okay, so the last two things, uh, talking about this energy. So as we move away from this Scorpio full moon and as we move more towards the upcoming Gemini full moon. So we have, we have a full moon, or I'm sorry, a new moon, a Gemini new moon coming up on uh, June 3rd. And the, oh, man, it's going to be, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm already excited. So think about what's happening here. We are moving out of this energy of like deep release, deep purge, deep alleviation of feelings of inadequacy and insecurity. And we're moving into this full, this whole, oh my gosh, can we talk today? We can. This <laughs> new moon, new moon in Gemini, which is all about communication. And it's all about opening up in a very uh, creative, and communicating in a very open and creative way with this, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm hearing, like, free love expression, free love expression, so not um, being inhibited, not feeling limited, not feeling insecure or inadequate, so being able to communicate openly, like, hey, look, this is how I feel, like, I feel this way, I've had these feelings for a while, or conversely, like, I, I can't do this anymore, like, yeah, I've been feeling this way for a while, I've been feeling doubt for a while, and I'm just, I'm not able to do this anymore, so we are moving towards this energy, which is all about fresh starts, right, all about partnerships, right, twins, Gemini, uh, relationships and communication as far as expressing ourselves in new clear ways of authenticity and this is actually relating to uh, relating to a major theme of not just um, within romantic partnerships but also like professional partnerships like if we're doing collaborations thank you Nicholas <laughs> better Kate than never <laughs> that is the cutest thing I've heard all day oh my gosh <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. Like, that totally just delighted me. <laughs> um, so we are moving out of this energy of, like, not feeling worthwhile and not feeling good enough and not feeling like, you know, do you love me? No. Do you love me? No. What about now? Do you love me now? And moving into, like, love. <laughs> like, just being open and just, like, do you want to do this thing? <laughs> Let's be creative. Let's be open about this. Let's be authentic. And so that is going to assist us moving forward, whether it be in our creative endeavors, whether it be in romantic endeavors, whether it be in professional endeavors, whatever you are feeling called towards, whether it be a move, whether it be committing to family, whether it be um, moving out of single and into partnership or, or vice versa, uh, you know, just uh, perpetuating what has been fl I'm hearing flaming up, the, the, the flame, right? The flame within you, the fire that's been, I mean, again, I'm hearing uproar, that's been rising within you, wherever that flame is pulling you forward, being able to, to follow through on that. So that was less than 10 minutes, right? That was only a couple minutes. <laughs> so what do you guys say we get started on doing some readings? <laughs> I can feel it. I can feel it. You guys are like, enough. Enough about the energy. Let's just talk about what's going on in my world. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to say starting now. Starting now. Please let me know your question. And I'm going to go in order. So right now I'm looking at Nicholas, his, his beloved, uh, generous gift of $2. Anything below that, I'm just going to go in order that I see your questions. And tonight I'll probably go until 7.30, 7.40. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So first up, <laughs> seriously, Nicholas, I just want you to write my slogans and like write my content. <laughs> and you just have such a fun way with words. Actually, Brooke too. If I, you know, honestly, like if I were to build a team, there's so many of you that I'd just be like, and you, and you, and you, you guys are just, you're so gifted and so talented. Just, oh, I love it so much. Okay. Curious about my past lives. Okay, so it looks like Jody is the first one up. 
curious about my past lives. I think I got a glimpse of one in a flash of thing. I don't know if anything might be able to tell me. Okay, so as we open up the questions, I want to set the sacred space and we'll begin with Jody's question. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for being the filter in which I receive all my information and energy. God and all of our spiritual teams know that I'm ready to connect. I ask that we're all placed within a safe and sacred space so the work that we do is of divine love and divine light. I then ask that we're placed within a blue violet light so the work that we do goes unseen by anything that is not of the highest vibration and highest throne. Keep the persona. She now steps aside. I open myself up to receive any and all healing messages and information that you all need at this time. Let's start with Jody. Jody is curious about past lives. Jody, I'm going right to the gut, my love. Going right to the gut. Um, okay, so this actually feels like, so we're talking about past lives, and this is a, something about a reoccurring theme. Um, honestly, I'm being taken to the one that is the most graphic and the most vivid and the most violent. Honestly, sometimes <laughs> these past lives, because there is such density within human collective consciousness, past lives can be super duper gruesome. Whereas, like, in this life, you might just have some mild self-esteem issues. Or in a past life, you may have been, like, in a torture chamber and disemboweled. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, like, it's, it's the same issue, but it's just, like, heavier, more intense within that lifetime. And so I'm actually feeling that for, for what's popping up is I actually feel like this is a pretty uh, profoundly gruesome and painful lifetime. Um, and I'm actually feeling... Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> oh, it's, it's actually... Okay. So you you may, you may actually want to book a session um, to get deeper into it because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to like get into the full depth of the lessons here in, the, in this lifetime as it pertains to the thread that I'm seeing it connected to. But I can tell you what I'm seeing is this is very much like like you you were you were physically tortured and incapacitated for some time. I do see that you were a, a man. Um, you were the patriarch of a family. You feel like. Um, okay, so there's a lot of greens. Okay, so I feel like you, you lived outside of a lordship, um, and it feels like it has to do with taxes. Yeah, that's the shady. Yeah, it really wasn't about taxes. So really, I just feel like it's a very, like, sociopathic um, landlord. Uh, but I do feel... That there were some issues about you feeling disempowered, of you feeling uh, issues with authority, of you feeling like like you were having your, your power taken away, your ability to provide, your ability to take care of your family, your ability to protect. Because um, I do feel this like, you know, take me, leave them alone, but then we all ended up getting taken anyway. And I do feel that they were taken, uh, their lives were taken in front of you. And then as you were left to be tortured and died, this is so horrible <laughs> to start, I apologize, but it's, it's what's coming through. Um, as you were left to be tortured and die um this was like the last the last bits of, the, of like what could pass aside from like just the excruciation of your existence um the energy that was left before you passed was feeling powerless and not feeling the ability to um remain strong and provide uh for your family within that lifetime so it was very much connected to multiple other lifetimes and i feel like this is something that it's the reason it's coming up now is because of feelings of powerless and inadequate, um, which is very much on theme, right? Very much uh, on in, in on point with this energy. Um, but I do feel that there's more there, and there's even suggestions on how to continue to move through that. So if you want to continue working on that, I would absolutely suggest booking some time together. And I would love to connect with you on that. But oh yeah, it's it's rough. <laughs> that feels really gross, really rough. Yeah. Um, Hannah, can I tell you who your spirit guides are? Okay, Hannah. I'll ask one to step forward now, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. Um, so it's a it's a feminine energy. She's stepping forward. She is not. Uh, she is not human. I can tell you that she's absolutely not human. Um, you must be uh, either a plant empath or connected to um, like elementals um, or like earth divas because I'm seeing it's almost like it's almost like a female version of Green Man. The way that she's presenting, she's very um, like her hair is it's almost like willow willow branches like willow leaves, and I'm seeing a fern. There's like a fern that's an actual crap. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Um, so it's almost like there's a piece of fern, and I thought it was a crown, but it's actually her. Like, it's it's connected to her. So it's a lot of green energy, and I feel that she's stepping forward right now as your primary guide uh, because you are... Hmm, 
Mm-hmm. You're growing. You're growing. You're growing yourself and you're growing stuff. There's some, there's like the, either projects or money, uh, intentions that you're growing. Um, and it's just like growing a garden. It's just like, like, how do I propagate this? How do I expand upon this? Um, and she's absolutely assisting you and helping you and supporting you to continue to grow that. Um, so I do feel there's, and there's so much, there's so much more. There's so much more, but I do feel that I'm being uh, encouraged to move forward. Um, but she, she is absolutely stepping forward as your primary guide right now. But you do have many. And we also have guides that shift and change depending on where we are in our journey because our guides, they're essentially aspects of ourselves, right? Like we are connected to them, they are connected to us. And so they are working with us on aspects aspects of ourselves within our journey within this physical reality um okay so i do feel my attention being called forward so hopefully that helps you hannah hi kate my name is jasmine oh jasmine i've been calling you celeste ah <laughs> hi jasmine is there a message from my ascended masters okay for jasmine Ooh. um I, you know, I wonder, I wonder who, yeah, who, I wonder who you've been working with because what I'm, the first thing I'm seeing for you, Jasmine, is a, is a jewel, like a very, um, large, faceted jewel. I'm also feeling Egypt, like I feel, I'm hearing Luxor. So that makes me feel like maybe you've been working with, like, Serapis Bay, um, and I feel that there is, uh, this is a calling, calling to, this is a divine calling. Okay, so, like, there, you, you are feeling a divine calling. There's, there's something that is calling you, uh, to action, calling you to purpose, and I do feel that you're Ascended Master, I, I do, I feel like it's Serapis Bay that you're working with, because I'm seeing the jewel, and it's interesting, because it's, I'm hearing the word emerald, but I'm seeing, like, um, it's like it's like a warm caramel color even though i'm hearing emerald i'm seeing a warm caramel color which is very interesting because emerald i mean emerald is all about regality right it's all about nobility it's all, it's also very connected to the heart space and also like expanding um really any any ability that you have connected in the heart space which is like your empathic abilities your psychic development um, but the fact that i'm seeing this warm caramel color is very much connecting to um I want to say home, but not home as in like your house. Home is in like earth, like making earth your home, finding finding something that makes you feel like earth is your home, finding your purpose, um, finding a calling here. So I do feel, and I just, I want to tell you, we are working with you, beloved one. Yeah, it's, I just feel like we are working with you, beloved one. We are working with you. So if you've been asking for the support, asking for the assistance, I feel like what is coming through is, it's literally this message, I feel like it's like, we're on it. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, maybe you keep checking in or you keep praying, but I feel like we're on it. Trust, I'm hearing, trust. Trust what comes in. So tr just trust, trust what comes in. hope that helps. Nicholas! <laughs> what is holding you back from getting a boyfriend? Okay, Nicholas. <sighs> Okay. All right. Um, so, okay. So to put it, to put it uh, bluntly, um, you are, but not, not you as in like, you're not, you're not doing anything that's undermining you consciously. You are on a higher level because what your current vibration is calling in has a little bit of, um, there's a smell of like a take advantage of me kind of smell on your your energy um in the sense that you are so giving and you're so generous and like you just show up like wide-eyed like ready to i'm hearing eager to please like you you are a very giving lover you're a very giving partner you're a very giving friend you're just you're very giving like you're really really giving and there's i'm hearing first impressions so like who you've been approaching or hoping to approach, there's some kind of first impression where you're showing up with such a generosity of spirit and it's actually coming off um, not, not in the way that you intend it because who you've been connecting with and who you've been, I'm hearing fishing for, who you've been fishing for is in a lower place mentally and vibrationally, um, is not as pure-hearted in the sense of wanting to build something I'm hearing you just want to build something fun and playful like you just want like a playmate to play in the sandbox with and I feel like there's just like who you've been approaching there's so many limitations and parameters around their own heart that they may see that as um 
they may see it as desperate, even though it's not. Like, I, like I feel like I, I see you, and I don't feel that it is, but it's being misread. It's being misread. And what is happening there is that your higher self is showing you it's time to upgrade your expectation. Ask for more. Ask for more. Like, who you're attracted to, who you're calling in, who you've been seeking, ask for, like, like, more. Expect more. Ask for more. You deserve better. You deserve more. Once that aligns, I feel like your higher self is going to be like, you may pass. <laughs> and then the connection can be made. So hopefully that helps you, my love. Gosh, you just such a sweet spirit. Becca, anything my guides want me to know? I'm going to work. Uh, my... Wait, yeah, why am I? There's this, um, okay, let me talk through this. There's this feeling of either, either you have made a decision to take something on yourself, so like you are the lead, like you are in charge of whatever this uh, project is or work commitment is, um, But I feel, I, I, again, I keep coming back. It's, it's so right in line with the, the energy. Uh, this feelings of, of inadequacy, of self-doubt. Um, like, am I, am I in too deep? This feeling of, of like, backpedaling, like wanting to backpedal or, or desiring to backpedal. And I feel, I'm seeing 44. So this is telling me, keep going, kid. Keep going. Keep moving forward. So whatever... Whatever you have either just accepted, like what you have just taken onto your plate, what you've just committed to, or what you're wrestling with, like do I have the capacity to commit to that? I, I'm, again, I'm seeing 44, like to keep going forward with this, that this is the right choice for you. Um, and when I, when I say right choice for you, this is being energetically supported. So you are being supported and encouraged to move forward in this direction. Um, and again, there's a thir the third time I saw 44, 44. So, Keep it moving, move forward. This is it. This is it for you. So keep going. Tanya, any messages for Tanya? Uh, I'm not sure if you're taking care of someone else's kids or property. There's this feeling of like you, I feel like you're doing a favor for someone or like there's some kind of like arrangement that you're doing for someone. Like there's some kind of trade or like your help it's like you're you're helping really you're helping and you're really you're providing a service of support to someone and I feel that um there may be these moments where you feel like you're over giving or that you've over committed or um that you're being taken advantage of and I actually feel that that you're being asked to shift how you look at this um, and to actually become a little bit more, I'm hearing the word self-effacing and less self-sacrificing. So asking for more, like if you, if you, if you are watching someone's kids or if you are watching someone's property, like actually asking for compensation or um, asking for something that actually really benefits you. Cause they're showing me like, Oh, here you go. Like I'm giving you a fruitcake and it's like, you hate fruitcake or you're allergic to gluten. It's just like, Oh, that's nice. Thank you. But like, you can't use it. And so I feel like, like, I, I'm okay with doing this. I'm okay with showing up and doing this, but I actually need something that I can use. <laughs> I need, I need like, a, like, a helpful compensation. Um, so whether that mean, you know, time, money, food, other services, whatever it may be. But I, I feel you're being encouraged to ask for fair compensation, shall I say. Fair compensation. So hopefully that helps you, Tanya. Okay. I'm sorry guys I think I just lost my place okay there we go Katie can you help me find my life purpose any message from spirit how to connect more with spirit okay that's for Katie um Katie my love the first thing that I'm hearing is you need to realize how powerful you actually are and stop making yourself so small so, um, God, I feel like that was such tough love. Please know that everything that I share is with love. Uh, but I do feel that, like, you have been settling. You have been um, shrinking yourself. Because I'm hearing demure, demure. Like, maybe making yourself smaller, making yourself demure in order to, like, fit in or to, like, go with the flow. And I feel that there is more, there is more of your 
you don't realize the power that you have. You don't realize the power that you have in conversation and negotiation. Um, because there, it's almost like, I feel like whoever you're surrounded by, like whoever, yeah, it's this feeling of like whoever you're surrounded by doesn't let you know the impact that you have. Like if you make a comment or if you say something or if you feel a certain way, they're not showing you the impact or the gravity that, that you have on them, um, which is actually a manipulation tactic is what I'm hearing to keep you small, to keep you feeling small. It's, it's, a, it's a power, it's a power thing. It's a power play. And so I feel that what is coming through for you as far as like, how can you connect more with spirit? And also how do you find your life purpose is first of all, you got to get bigger. Right, you gotta get bigger. And something that I, I want to I want to send you home with, right? So something that you can play with is if you can find a space, a, a sanctuary that you can be in in your own energy. So it could be a bedroom, your car, an office, whatever. That someone else is not going to interrupt you or interfere with your time. I want you to breathe deeply three times and envision your aura. Okay, envision your auric field around you. And I want you to play with visualizing, pushing it out and breathing it in pushing it out and bringing it in, just like you're breathing, right? Like you're inhaling and you're exhaling, inhaling and exhaling. So play with pushing your energy out and in so that you get more comfortable and more familiar with what it feels like to actually push your energy out and enforce boundaries. And it's funny how that, that just snaps. So yeah, enforce your boundaries so that you, you stop being so small. So hopefully that helps. Danielle, are there any messages for me, please? Danielle. Okay, um, Danielle, you, gosh, you, I, this is so funny. I'm hearing she's a good woman. She's a good woman. So you, you feel, I'm not sure if like you volunteer or if you donate, you feel very charitable. You feel very charitable with like stuff, um, and time. And there's, there's this feeling of like, you've been donating to the wrong cause again when i say right and wrong it's just it's not in alignment right just creating a dissonance and when i say donating to the wrong cause like this could mean like you know maybe you've signed up for um you know pta or like to bring snacks for the like i don't know like like you may have signed up for something where it's like oh well they need help and like this is something i can do or i have the time or you know like it's like i feel like there's like you're kind of like talking yourself into doing it and i feel that you're being asked to free up your energy because it's not serving you i feel like you're serving others more than than then uh, it's almost like your energy is not being utilized wisely and i feel because again there's this i'm hearing charitable spirit you have such a charitable spirit about you, but I do feel that there's, okay, I'm hearing energy vampires, so there are some energy vampires around you that are taking your kindness for weakness and are taking for granted your generosity. You guys are very similar today. A lot of this generous giving, giving, giving energy um, that I feel it's almost like, you know, well, to be accepted, to be loved, to be a part of, to be supportive, um, th that if you really took a look at, like, am I really feeling this? Am I really excited to do this? No, I'm not. Um, so I, I feel like what wants to come through is to be honest with yourself about this so that you can reappropriate your energy to something that actually fulfills you, something that actually uh, is in line with your passion. Hopefully that helps. Good luck. Mariana. I always say your name. I just love it. Should I move on or wait for the soulmate? It's been two years. Oh, okay. I don't even need to doodle. I just heard move the fuck on. <laughs> okay. You're moving on, baby doll. You're moving on. You're getting the green light. Move on. Because if you're worried about it, I'm here and I'll circle back. I'll circle back. So there will be a reconciliation. There will be a reconnection, but it may not be in the vein or capacity that you've been hoping for. So move on, sister girlfriend. Move on. Move on. Take what's in front of you. <laughs> Take what's in front of you. Nancy, when is a new job coming in for me? Fall or summer for Nancy? I'm seeing June. Okay. Um, that's cool. So I've, I've been throwing out this disclaimer that I've noticed when I'm connecting, my guides are not super thrilled about giving timelines lately, but I am seeing very clearly and confidently for you, June. Uh, there's this, yeah, they're feeling like this takeoff acceleration. Uh, so, and it feels like something that you've either put irons in the fire, put in an application, maybe like put the word out to someone. So this is something that it's an opportunity that will be presenting itself. Why am I seeing the third? Okay, so they're showing you the number three. 
So this could be June 3rd, this could be the third week of June, this could be um, three possibilities, but I am seeing the number three and I'm also feeling and seeing June very clearly. So good luck. <laughs> Nadine. Oh, thanks Nadine. <laughs> I need your help. Am I living my life purpose? What are my gifts? Read me. <laughs> All right, Nadine. What's up with Nadine? Okay, so, hmm, what I'm, okay, um, what I'm feeling for you, Nadine, is you have, you have this, like, spy, informant, like, super cool vibe <laughs> that's coming through. Um, it's almost this feeling like I'm able to go into really dark situations to rescue people so there as far as like your life purpose and like your soul gifts and and whether you're honoring them or not um i'm hearing yeah there, so you have you have this warrior spirit within you but it's very much connected to your heart space because i'm also seeing the soul gift activist so not necessarily meaning that like you know you're downtown protesting um although you could be but i feel like act, when i see activists as a soul gift this is like you can't do something that you don't believe in wholeheartedly I'm actually seeing, like, as an example, like, you're going into um, war-torn country to rescue children and bring them home. So it's like, it's that kind of a feeling. Like, you have, you have this warrior spirit where you're able to go into situations that are, like, real, like, hairy, very hairy, hairy, hairy situations um, that don't feel safe or calm or comfortable at all. But you have an armor about you that is very natural. It's like, it's almost like this God spark armor, like this God spark protection where you're able to keep it composed, keep it together, go into a very hairy situation, get what you need, whether it be rescuing children, whether it be information, whether it be negotiating a deal, and then, and then getting out like with you know, I'm hearing mission accomplished, mission accomplished. So it has like kind of like that, that spy vibe. Um, so I feel like I honestly, I, I want to keep developing that and keep talking about that. So, um, I feel like there's so much more there. If you feel called to, I'd love to connect with you and work with you because I feel like there's a lot to explore there. Uh, but that's, gosh, that's really, that's actually really cool. That's really cool. So ho hopefully that helps. It gives you enough to work with. Ken. Hi, Ken. Any general advice from my or your guides, okay. Ken. I just heard release the X, um, so I'm not sure if you've been having dreams or memories or even conversations or reaching out to um, an X recently, and I feel there's, I'm hearing unrequited love, so there may feel like um, there's there's an area of imbalance within your heart space that you may feel unresolved or you didn't get the answers that you needed or the the, um, the resolution that you needed or maybe there's hope of so like well maybe there's still hope this kind of a feeling but I actually feel like you're holding yourself back um, and when I say ex this could be an ex lover this could be an ex friend ex partner uh, um, ex I'm here also ex living situation so maybe you either lived with this person or this was a living environment but I am hearing release your ex because you're you're being guided to new beginnings. You're being guided to, gosh, you know, I'm hearing you don't even see it coming. You don't even see it coming, but it has to do with you really honoring the release. And I'm hearing like Marie Kondo, like um, with the, the act of, or the art of tidying up, uh, how whenever you release something, it's like you thank it as you release it or, you know, Ho'oponopono. So I do feel like release it in an honorable way, um, but you, you, are, you are being guided to let, let this go, let this go. So I hope that helps. Big hugs. Sammy Lou, can you tell me how my relationship is going with Benny? Love you too. <laughs> it's funny, as I look at Benny's energy right now, I feel like he's just got his head down. So um, it's almost like he's got, he's got a, they're saying a to-do list as long as his arm. So he may actually have a lot of stuff that he's focusing on. Like, um, I'm here and getting the ship right. So yeah, he is ship tidy, ship right, ship shape. Okay, so he may be like working on um, projects, um, tasks, action steps, building things, creating things, tidying things up. Like I actually feel like he's very like task foc task focused right now. So if he's not as open or willing or um, 
what's the best way to describe this? Like present, available to go deep, like deep in discussions or like, you know, to really go places with you. It's just because I feel honestly a little bit of overwhelm with what he's got in front of him. But it, again, I feel this feeling of like, I've just got to do this, babe. Like, we're good. We're good. We're good. So I do, I want to say like, you're good. You guys are good. You're just, you're focusing on different things right now. You're focusing on very different things right now. But I feel honestly, he is focused on you in the sense that like what he's focused on will benefit you. So like what, what needs to be done is something that you want to be done also, or you need to be done also. So hopefully that helps. But you guys, you're good. You're good. You're strong. You're strong. Denise. Job clarity. Feel such a strong pull to a spiritual career, but not sure about my direction path. Okay, Denise. Oh, wow. Yeah, Denise. For sure. For sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No, you've, you've got some healing. Just your energy. Like, just your presence is very healing. Um, so what I'm, what I'm seeing for you, and, and honestly, take what resonates, leave the rest. What I'm seeing for you, it's almost like in like an integrative medicine kind of capacity. So I see you, gosh, I almost see you like at psychic fairs or like expos, summits, um, talking about a modality that you really believe in. And so this could be EFT, this could be... Um, which is tapping this could I mean I really feel like there's like an assortment of modalities that you are being called to explore and I feel like like it's almost like you need to I keep feeling like the the tinge the tingle in the back of the head which is telling you like you're mentally thinking about this and I feel like you mentally almost like make yourself a list of like either classes or courses or different areas that you want to explore and see which modality you connect with the most so this could be crystal healing this could be reiki this could be um Really, it's, it's something that I feel like it bridges like the medical community and the metaphysical community. Like there's something very integrative about what you're being called towards. And it could honestly, could be like hypnotherapy. It could be past life regression. It could be something like that. Um, but I do feel that you are being called to explore and find what you love, find what really resonates for you. Because I, I really do see you like, it starts off as like a side hobby, turns into a side hustle, and then it turns into like, my second full-time job kind of a feeling like I'm so devoted and into this and like I'm turning this into something because I believe in it so much and just your your when you talk like there's you just you convey a very like healthful I want what she has kind of a presence um which is really going to work to your favor or to your benefit um wow yeah yeah so you're you're and there's you're already on the track like you're already on that trajectory so just continue to follow that your inner pulse and your inner guidance Hope that helps. If you want to get into details about that, Denise, like if you feel like booking time together, we can actually get into like nitty gritty practical steps of like, what do I need to do? Where do I need to look? We can spend more time on that if you like. Marcia. Hi. Any messages from your higher self? Oh. Honey, I just heard, don't be scared. So maybe there's uh, some trepidation or some nervousness or some fear. It almost feels like stage fright a little bit. Like I feel like you're about to step onto something like, like the spotlight is on you, like you are in focus. And it's funny because I feel like normally it wouldn't phase you. Like normally it'd be no big deal, but something feels very, very weighty here. Something feels very, like it's, it's, it's a big deal. Like you don't wanna, you don't wanna, disappoint you don't want to fail you don't want to drop the ball like there's some kind of like I'm, I'm doing this because I'm honoring uh, either a commitment or something that I've said like I need to fulfill this obligation that I vocalized and I'm just hearing don't be scared don't be scared I really feel that you are um, being challenged um, it's almost like in standing in your full glory and I feel like the reason that this is happening it's almost like clearing like the last little bits because you're you're really you're being prepared for a life center stage I want to say like you're being prepared for a life in the spotlight um, and I feel like you know this you know you've known this you've known this was coming and I feel like there are a lot of they're saying rallying the troops so a lot of troops supporting you in this that are that are encouraging you to move forward because I feel like you're almost like getting pushed out on stage to speak but I can hear like like a little vibrato in your voice, I'm just like, <clears throat> like there's a little bit of nerves that's happening. And I just, I, <laughs> I'm just, I'm hearing like, you're just, you're just going to push right through that. You're just going to push right through this and find, find the flow. You're going to find the flow in it. I hope that helps. 
Julie. 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 I know it's Jolene, but I just I hear it every time. Julie. Any messages for Julie? Um <laughs> I have no idea how to interpret this. I'm just going to share with you what I'm seeing. Um, okay. So sometimes it, it might make more sense to you than it, than it does to me. Uh, over to my right. So like when I'm, when I'm, when I have visions appear on certain sides, like this is telling me this is an action space, right? This is something that I'm doing or something I'm about to do or something I'm going to be requested that I do or participate in. I'm seeing, this is where it gets weird. I'm seeing a croissant. Are you familiar with like a croissant? Like like the French baked goods, like the, the buttery roll croissant. I'm actually seeing a croissant standing up on its side and then the middle part is opening up and then it's like a bus where people are getting in and out of. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure if you have like a connection to baking, a connection to France or, or French language. Um, there's some, there's something that has to do, this could be like lineage, maybe like heritage, um, ancestry as well, but there is this feeling of transit. There's this feeling of transit that's coming through, uh, with like information, personalities coming and going, um, bussing in, so bussing in patrons or bussing in customers or clients or people to connect with. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to spend too much time trying to, to discern what this is because I'm going to have to go deeper and <laughs> get a bigger story, but hopefully that makes sense for you. It definitely does not make sense for me. It's that makes sense for you, Julie. Um, <laughs> and it's cute. It's funny. I, I just don't understand it. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> uh, Brooke. I'm feeling a little cut off from my spiritual side, my guides. Do my guides have any advice for me? Okay, for Brooke. Yes, um, this is intentional. Okay, so I'm hearing this is intentional. So you're in a phase right now where you are intentionally, uh, it's almost like the volume has been turned down on, on the synchronicities or the messages that you're receiving because you're being encouraged to acutely pay attention to your environment so it's like um yeah we really want you to see the result of your current manifestation so like uh meaning like like <laughs> what is that abraham hicks like step one is to observe what is so i feel i feel that that's where you're at like like it's almost like the volume is being turned down so that you can really pay attention to the discomfort and the dissonance that currently exists in your external environment and how it doesn't line up and match up because i feel like it can, at this stage within your journey, it can be a little bit of a crutch to lean on, and, and, and I, I don't say this in a bad way, like to not lean on your guides and angels. The reason that this is happening is when we don't feel that support, we don't feel that we can lean on that, we have um, this dissonance, this this kinetic energy rise up within us, or I'm sorry, frenetic energy, where it feels uh, like something needs to change, we, we feel unsatisfied, we feel uh, like a lack of calmness and so that can actually propel us and cause us to move into a different space of energy where we might be willing to accept uh, a new possibility or go into a new direction that we may not have been uh, pulled towards or, or willing to go towards otherwise. We actually have to move through this feeling of um, maybe feeling isolated or feeling alone or feeling like we have to navigate our own path. And I can assure you, I can absolutely assure you that your spiritual support team has absolutely not left your side of anything. I'm hearing reinforcements. If anything, you've got positive reinforcements behind you. But as far as the communication goes, this is more so that so you can learn to stand on your own and observe what is and, and very clearly read what's going on within your inner universe so that you can start making some practical decisions on how you're best going to move forward. So I hope that helps you, my lovely Brooke. Sending you big hugs. Okay. Carla. Is there any messages from my friend Jimmy? Jimmy. Anything from Jimmy? Jimmy. I don't know why I want to say Jimmy <laughs> for Carla. I just, I just, I just feel like festive. I feel partying. I'm here. Can't stop. Won't stop. Um, party over here. Like there's, there's some kind of like festivity. Um, good times. Good times. Good times. I just, I feel like, like I'm 
it's not like we're not clinking glasses because they're plastic cups you ever try to clink a plastic cup it's just like gook. <laughs> like I'm, I'm hearing like gook, gook. like we're clinking plastic cups there's there's some type of um loud like I, I just there's a lot of loud it's almost like I, I'm trying to shout to talk to you because uh, I feel like there's a lot of noise there's a lot of noise where I am there's a lot of people where I am um, I'm not sure if you guys knew each other like you, you were in, in a party scene together or like you were in a like a social setting like this um, where this is where he is now again without spending too much time going deeper to elaborate or clarify further but I do feel like as he's stepping forward there's also this like I'm not sure if like he smoked um, or smoke like it's this I'm getting like that raw raspy feeling in my throat like you smoke too many cigarettes one night kind of a thing like you go out your party you smoke too many cigarettes the next day your throat hurts like it's there's something with the throat like my throat really hurts as I'm connecting to him and then it's interesting I feel um, I feel responsible I feel a feeling of responsibility so I feel a weight on my back that I feel burdened by I feel responsible for so I may have made a bad decision I, I, I feel like I'm taking ownership and I'm feeling responsible for something um, and I feel, honestly I feel like I, I do I, I want to keep going but I but I'm feeling my guys step in and encouraging me to move along so I do I hope I hope that that helps um, support and, and connect you for now and if you want to work together more please reach out to me I would love to connect with you guys um, but I, again I do feel my, my guys stepping in and moving forward so hopefully that helps you Carla oh thank you Marta <laughs> Lisa why do well self-employed <laughs> that's funny I didn't even have to doodle um I just heard it's your jam it's your jam um there's that's funny they're saying you have an issue with authority <laughs> so and it's not like you're this rebel rouser like you know outlaw like you have to live on the outskirts of town but I do feel that when you are your own authority they're saying there's a number of things that that's gonna do for you um, you care more about what you're doing uh, number two you're gonna find your leadership abilities that have um, always been repressed and suppressed is what I'm hearing and also there's a newfound appreciation for being uh, I'm hearing self mod modulated and mod moderated okay no self modulated and moderated so maybe like um, really honing on your own organizational skills and abilities and prioritizing um, but I actually I just want to say congratulations for making this decision like I'm hearing that this was not an easy decision for you but this was really scary and risky and I just they're showing me like the round of applause I just want to bravo bravo sister um, but Yes, hell yes, is what the answer, to put it plainly. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, totally different different game, different ball of wax. I'm gonna be learning a lot. I do feel myself moving forward, but so hopefully that helps. Well done, bravo, bravo, Lisa. Thank you, Nikia, thank you so much, thank you. Oh, that is much appreciated. Okay, so I, I actually am starting to feel um, a little drain, a little fatigue. So let's go until 7:45. And if I don't get to your question by 7:45, I do encourage you to book uh, the recorded readings. It's $22 for two questions. It's a smoking deal. Again, that's per my guides. Like it really is a smoking deal. You get a lot. A lot can come through in 15 minutes, and you get the recording. And I'll snap a photo of the notes that I draw. So um, anything that if I don't get to it today, or if it's burning on your mind or your heart for the rest of the month, it's going to be $22 to book that. That recorded reading so I would highly encourage you to do so if I get to you today or not <laughs> okay who's next Jack hey Jack could be Jacques I think it's Jacques is it Jacques hi Kate love your messages thanks is my crush coming back kisses from Brazil so it would help if I had your crush's name so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect to Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's your heart space. Okay, I'm just going to connect to them through you. Uh, yes, but not in the capacity that you're hoping for. Um, and, and I apologize, I feel like, like that's not what you were hoping to hear, but I feel that there is a there's there's something that I feel attracted to that I feel that I want to emulate that like I see I see what I 
want to develop within myself. I feel like that's what I'm attracted to. That's what I'm feeling pulled towards. Um, but I feel like as far as this becoming like happy, harmonious relationship, um, right now at this point in the timeline, based on your energy, based on their energy, it does not feel like a solid yes. Okay. It actually feels like, like, Yes, but not in the capacity, not in a romantic capacity. Um, almost like a, like I feel like I'm orbiting around you. So yes, like I might be in your life, I might be in your social circle, or I might be you know around you professionally, but I don't feel like um, by your side. So um, I, I encourage you to explore other options. Um, I encourage you to open up possibilities and meet other people and. Um, is that though there is there is there's there is some like there is something there like I feel like you're coming back for something but it's like we're gonna help each other but in some other capacity so it's not going to be like a relationship but we are going to help each other so there really is a connection between the two of you there really is there really is absolutely like an energetic bond between the two of you so yes yes they will come back into your life absolutely um just not in the like serenading with you know the boom box above the head kind of a fashion so hopefully that helps you my love alicia hi alicia it does <laughs> so what do my angles say oh your angels okay <laughs> I was like getting all like you know smizing and like making angles okay so what do my angels say i feel like i need some more guidance or motivation or something i'm very much you know what should i do okay alicia <laughs> Your guides are pretty funny. They're like, that's a pretty vague question. Um, there's, a, there's an answer to that question in many different areas of your life. For some reason, though, what the first place that I'm going is parents. Um, I'm not sure if you are in communication with your parents, if you're close with your parents, if your parents are even still together. But like, there's, there's some... Okay, let me, I'm just going to explain to you what, oh my God, okay, thank you. All right, you got to cut cords. That's what it is. Fuck, that's, that's super painful. Um, is that mom? Okay. All right, so, Yowza, Alicia, I've not felt, I've not felt a cord that painful in a long time. That kind of knocked the wind out of me. Um, so my body is telling me that there is a cord between you and mom that is undermining your energy, which is part of why you feel stuck. If you feel this inner turmoil, if you feel an inner conflict, uh, have you ever tried to take snow pants off without taking your boots off first? It just doesn't happen. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, <laughs> that's kind of what I'm seeing. Like you're, tr you're trying, like you're spinning your wheels. You're putting yourself out there. Like you're making concerted efforts, but you just can't, you just can't get this off. And Yowza, this is, this is mom right here. This is mom right here. So I would encourage you to look into cord energetic. So it's an energetic cord of attachment. If you're not familiar with what it is, look into what that is, what that means. Um, I'm more than happy to work with you on this. This is one of my absolute favorite things to do because it's so life-changing. But it's up to you if you feel aligned with me. It doesn't have to be me. You can work with another healing practitioner. Uh, so look at, look up, like do some research on what, cord removal is or cord uh, disintegration, cord cutting, whatever resonates for you. This this is a removal. This is a removal. So this would be, if I were to work with you, this is a cord removal, but that needs to go. That needs to go big time. That was, that seriously knocked the wind out of me. It kind of surprised me a little bit. <laughs> so that's your next step. That's your next step. And that, that will be life changing for you. Jayla. Jayla. Any messages for me? Um, I'm seeing like, like cinema, like performance. Um, I feel like you're, you're being asked to perform. You're being asked to perform and I'm trying so I'm trying to understand in what capacity. It's almost like, like, I don't feel like you're performing like in a movie or on TV, although you might, right? That's super awesome if you are, but this is like, I'm, I'm, I'm being asked to perform in my day to day life. Like. Like I, I have to put on this mask. I have to put on this persona or this identity um, to be a certain way in my day-to-day -day life. And I feel like this is, here's what's interesting because it's not like 
draining you. It's actually giving like it's it's providing fuel for the fire. Like it's kind of giving you um, experience. Like okay, so I'm asking for an example, and it's an example of like if you've ever waited tables, right? Like if you've ever been a waitress or a waiter, um, wait person, wait staff. <laughs> there is a certain element of acting, right? Like no matter what attitude or request or whatever you're dealing with, with the customer, you still have to, <laughs> right? Like you still gotta put on like the bright and shiny and like, sure thing, sir, coming right up. Like you need to put on that that act because it's, it's part of the show, right? It's part of the service. But what that does, yeah, it can be draining in time. Like you can get tired at the end of the shift, but if you put in like a solid summer or a solid season of doing that, you are like honing your chops like you're honing your chops of um being it there's something about like you're going to be moving into a, a a space of communication like you're going to rely upon your communication and there has to be a certain element of performance involved and so i feel like like so right now you're being asked to perform to hone those chops to get very um skilled to get very skilled in that ability. And it's not that it's not authentic, right? Because I don't feel that this is an a, a exercise in inauthenticity of you hiding yourself. I actually feel like this has everything to do with your, I want to say career, but I'm also hearing creative pursuits. So I feel like your career and creative pursuits are actually blending if they're not already blended. <laughs> so yeah, let that light shine, girlfriend. Let that light shine. Do it to it. Hopefully that helps. Sam. Sam's looking for general guidance. Okay. Um, so it's interesting, Sam. I just like I just kind of got small. Like my world just got small. And so you may be feeling guided to spend a lot of time by yourself, um, a lot of reading, a lot of writing. I feel like there's a lot of internal work that's being done for you right now um and it's interesting because that, that I said it done for you it's like it's not yeah you're doing it like you're honoring your rhythms you're honoring your pull but I feel like you're you're working with beings beyond the veil to get very very clear on what it is you want for yourself because I feel like there have been aims in the past like I've aimed for certain things and it's like yeah I'm gonna go for that I'm going for it I'm gonna aim for it but then like it starts to materialize and then I feel like no 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 that's not right that's not it that's not right and so there's almost like this mixed messaging that I feel like has been surrounding you so you're in this period right now where it's like take a step back maybe vocalize to yourself or like through words um, I'm also hearing through literature, so like maybe through reading, through writing, getting very crystal clear on exactly what it is that you want for yourself and that you want in your life. Um, and I'm also there's there's a there's I feel like there's a woman there's there's this feminine energy that wants to come into your life that is like it's very very loving, it's very nurturing, it's very warm, and it's very um, embracing. Um, and I feel like. This is either someone that you you know that's new, like this is a new person or a new relationship or someone that's coming in. And I feel like I want to tell you that it's it's safe to let your guard down and it's safe to open up to her. Um, that she feels really she has very warm, loving, nurturing intentions. Like she's very much like a like a mother lover. <laughs> okay, it's a weird thing to say, but I'm hearing like a mother lover. Like she loves in a very mothering way. Um, and I feel and again I'm hearing reciprocity, like I feel like this is something that you really need. You really need this support at this time. And, um, and then she feels appreciated. So like, it's a very harmonious, compatible connection. So hopefully that helps. Okay. So, oh my gosh. So I'm going to go to Kelly. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So five more questions and it's 747. So I'm going to do five more questions. Um, and then and I'm going to call it there. So, um, bah, 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 bah. Divine Regal. Okay, so is the root with my old friend, a.k.a. ex-friend David, completely over or does spirit have more work? Okay, ex-friend David. Oh, very clearly, you have learned your lesson there. You have learned your lesson. I do feel like there's a little, there, yeah, they're saying lament. So there's a little bit of a heartache um, because you may be like remembering good times, remembering the positives. But I definitely feel like this is a very challenging connection, a very challenging dynamic. And just the space that I'm feeling that David is in is very self 
focused, very self-serving. Um, there really isn't much room for you to feel received and heard. Um, so it's creating an imbalance. So I, I very much feel like you, you got the lesson and now you are able to shift. Remember how we were talking earlier about like shifting into that space of unconditional love? You are being encouraged to shift into that and just send, you know, I love you. I wish the best for you. I don't necessarily need you in my life. So hopefully that helps. Pauline. Hey, Pauline. Do my guides have any messages for me for Pauline? I feel like there's some kind of like, like you need an outlet. Do you know what I mean? Like you need an outlet and it's not, it's an emotional outlet. Like you need an emotional outlet. It's not a creative outlet. Like, you, like I just, I'm seeing you like screaming into a pillow. Like I just, I feel like you need, you need a release. Like you need some kind of like catharsis. Like, like, oh, I just need this. Oh. Okay. So they're sharing some suggestions. I don't want to be too candid since this is very public. Um, Pauline, if, if you want to reach out to me, I'll, I'll share I'll share what's coming through um, in a private message because I feel I feel like it's very personal what's coming through. Um, so uh, just remind me, catharsis, personal, <laughs> and and I'll remember what that is for you. Um, yeah, but you you need a release. You need a release. Okay, Dottie, hey Dottie, can you tell me about the violet flame in relation to my abilities? Okay, so yes, so the violet flame is here for you. Um, the violet flame is a tool that you can use for yourself and that you can also call upon to use within your own healing abilities that you are providing a service or healing service to others. So violet flame, imagine that this is like um, like a decontamination tool, right? Like this is a, like a sterilization tool. So if you take on too much energy for yourself, or if you take on too much, you know, if you're porous, if you, you know, soak up and hold on to energy that doesn't belong to you, even if it's just like a quick conversation or just passing in the hallway, we can still absorb energy that doesn't belong to us. And so you can use the violet flame, call upon it. I'll give you a quick exercise. So sitting in a chair, and breathing deeply, just set the intention that you're grounding yourself and you're plugging yourself into the crystalline grid. You can even visualize and envision that roots are extending from the bottom of your feet. And then a cord is coming out your root, your root chakra, so your tailbone, and plugging into the core of the earth or even coiling through the core of the earth. And you can even breathe in, breathe in and pull violet flame energy up from the core of the earth and surround yourself in that flame and just sit. You can even maybe even hear like the fire crackling. You can feel that violet flame energy around you burning off any energetic residue, vibrational density, energetic debris, anything that doesn't serve you that's not in your highest and best. And so it, it, shifts it, it moves it away, it clears it. And you can also call upon this violet flame when working with others. So hopefully that, that gives you a lot to work with. Stephanie. Yes, Jody, I agree. Nicholas is awesome. <laughs> Stephanie, will I find a boyfriend soon? So there's, there's some things that's coming through for you, my love. Um, so there are different possibilities. There are different options that are presenting themselves. So when I call forth the answer to your question, I feel that there's a number of threads that are presenting. And so you have the option to choose a path. And I do feel that if it's just a matter of getting a boyfriend sooner, like to have this companion, to have someone by my side, I do feel that it is possible to call call someone in um, and they absolutely will be a soulmate, but this is going to be a soulmate that will reflect back to you any other areas of, I'm hearing self-deception, that you may not be completely honest with yourself about embracing who you are fully and needing that um, validation and that love from another in order for you to feel more anchored and solid. And so this relationship will poke the bear, so to speak, right? It will poke poke that to exacerbate it so that you work on it so that you look at it because uh, the universe is it's an incentivized program right so like we have to be incentivized in order to 
do the work sometimes. And so I do feel like really very, very soon it is possible for you to get a stable partnership, especially they're saying if you don't need to put a label on it if it's just like hey do you want to hang out again like if you're keeping it casual then it develops into i'm free you're free let's hang out and then it develops into something so i actually feel that fairly soon if you so choose that um however i do feel there are other possibilities and other threads that if you're seeking like a life partnership meaning like someone that is willing and able to be emotionally available and then grow like show up and grow with you for you uh, for themselves that is something that i feel like there's a couple more areas of focus that need uh, shifting that need polishing within your life uh, within yourself and your own energy as far as like what your vibration is calling in in order to to get that so hopefully that that helps but really it's it's up to you what you want what you what you want what you really really want kelly kelly m last but certainly not least <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Do I have any intuitiveness that I'm not aware of or blocking? <laughs> okay, I'm laughing because I just, yeah, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, we all do though. That's, that's the beauty part of human evolution is that we all do. We all, every single human comes pre-wired to receive energetic information and to interpret and analyze and transmute energetic information. How we do that and in what capacity we do that this, this is the journey, right? This is this is the ascension. This is the evolution. This is the new paradigm. This is what we're moving into. So yes, absolutely. As far as specifically one area that you can begin to develop, I'm um, bringing in, okay, claircognizance. Okay, so it feels like claircognizance. So sometimes you just know things, but you doubt that you know them and you need things to happen to validate or show you that you were right all along. And so I feel that you're being invited to develop your claircognizance. And here's a, here's a simple exercise, simple tool that I want to give to you in order to develop that. So um, imagine that you are in a relationship with the universe, like you've got a crush on the universe. And in order to woo and court the universe in this new budding blossoming relationship, this new dance that you have, the only thing that the universe is asking for in this blossoming relationship is your trust. So in order to develop your claircognizance, imagine like, you know, if something comes in, if you have a thought that comes in rather than, I don't know why I would think that, or that doesn't make any sense, or that it's against all evidence or against all odds, or I have no way of validating or proving that, or proving that, or approving, uh, trust that this is a gift from your new beloved, right? That like your, your, the universe, your new, your new beloved, your new um, wooing, <laughs> wooing partner is bestowing a gift via your claircognizance, via a thought in your mind, via an idea, via something that you just know, right? You just know. And so rather than being like, ew, I don't want this, you're not going to do that if you're trying to establish a loving relationship. You're going to thank you. You're going to appreciate it. You're going to receive it and you're going to hold on to it and look closely at it. Even if it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I don't need this. I don't, I don't know how to handle this. You're still going to give it the attention and the, and the time or the trust that it needs. So I feel like that's what's coming through for you is if you have an idea, a thought, just a knowing, just a very, very clear knowing, trust, trust that that is a gift from the universe. And if you need to see it play out in order for that validation, trust that you will. Trust that you will, but move forward with, with that dynamic of all the universe is asking for is trust, your trust, your faith. So hopefully that helps. Whew. Okay, I'm just double checking with my guides. Yeah, yeah, they're saying that's it. Okay. So my lovelies, oh, I know I didn't get to everyone. I know there's so many questions. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for your blessings and your generosity. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. Seriously, like this, this amps me up too. I absolutely love, love, love connecting with you guys. This is so much fun. Um, any, any last tidbits that I want to share with you guys? So the next video that I am for certain going to be doing is uh, June's crystal pick. That's where you pick message one, two, or three to see what energy message is coming through for you for the month of June. June is going to be quite lively. <laughs> so excited. I've been excited for June for months. Like June is just, it's been announcing its arrival for months. And I just, I can't wait to experience it. Although, you know, now moment, right? It's all about the now moment. <laughs> so um, if you're loving the Empath Apparel, hey, hey, it's been, it's been pretty comfy, I must say. It's very, very comfy. 
Go to uh, my website if you're interested in getting uh, fashioning yourself some options. Boomingeye.com, and you click on shop. And there's an assortment of colors, so if you're not crazy about the white or the blue that you see, just click on it. There's an assortment of other colors that you can choose from and uh, pick the design that you like. And aside from that, if you wouldn't mind clicking that like button, that subscribe button, clicking the bell so you don't miss anything, honestly, I sincerely appreciate that. And every single time I see that like clicked, I feel like I'm getting a hug and a high five from you. So thank you so much to everyone for joining me tonight. This is sincerely like such a gift and such a pleasure for me as well. And I am so, so appreciative for you and your generosity and the community that we are creating together. This is awesome. <laughs> so with that, I'm sending you all of my love and I encourage you to continue seeking healing, empowerment, and freedom. See you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. Hugs. <laughs>